Greetings, I'm Eric Malabos. I'm a psychiatrist, a medical doctor and a researcher at the Fresnel Institute and I'm a scientific partner of the company C2Care. I'm using virtual reality in the context of virtual reality exposure therapy to treat people suffering from diverse uh, anxiety disorders and psychiatric disorders for almost 16 to 17 years. I have set up 15 to 20 different kinds of clinical studies and trials. The goal of these studies was to treat efficiently uh, different kind of patient with phobia or with different kind of anxiety disorders of, or uh, driving phobia or obsessive compulsive disorders and as well as addiction and I've used in this context virtual reality and all these studies have been published in scientific papers. The advantages of using virtual reality in exposure therapy are numerous. The first one is the control given to the therapist because a the therapist can construct a hierarchy in the treatment itself, which means that by just clicking on an icon, the therapist can choose how many people will be present in a virtual plane, uh, the transparency in a lift, how many um, blood could be on a wall for obsessive disorder, how many uh, rats could be in a cave, how many packets of cigarettes can be present on a table for addiction, so all these parameters can be controlled by the therapist, which means that you can really construct a very progressive and somehow soft um, therapy for the patient. The other advantage is, is it's purely confidential because all of this can be done inside uh, your clinic and not outside, which could be intimidating for the patient because of all the people around. And the other advantage is, of course, the, is the time itself. When facing virtual reality, most patients are intrigued, are astonished, curious and sometimes even a bit stressed, especially for the first session. But they like it because it's new, it's technological, especially for the young people, it's like fashionable. And once they try it, they, they can understand the, the, the force, the strength of the illusion, which will help them to progress in the treatment. So, most of them like it very much and they even want to carry on at home. The question that many uh, professionals ask us is what the, the patient have been learning inside the virology. Can he transfer what he have learned and experienced in reality? Uh, this, the answer is yes, because the situation of course is not as, as realistic in virtual reality, but because he was trained in a context close to reality and because he was also trained to use the method, the therapeutic method inside, the, inside virtual reality, just like a, a pilot training in a simulator, he will be able to transfer it in reality, which means that he will be able to drive, to take the plane, the real plane again, but he will be able to lessen his obsession and his ritual, but he will be able to stop smoking or drinking, so yes, most of the patient can transfer, I would say 80 to 90 percent, can transfer what they have learned in virtual reality in reality. Scientific efficiency of virtual reality exposure therapy have been demonstrated for quite some time now because the first clinical study was carried out in 1992, which means that there is almost 27, 28 years of scientific publication regarding the efficiency, regarding the therapeutic efficiency. So there is hundreds of scientific articles and papers that you can have access on the internet, which have proven that indeed uh, virtual reality exposure therapy can be efficient for a lot of psychological disorders. Does the efficiency, the therapeutic efficiency of uh, virtual reality exposure therapy is comparable to uh, real exposure in reality. Well, if you follow the different paper, meta-analysis, uh, you will see that it's proven that it's at least as efficient, but without the inconvenient of reality. It's too brutal, difficult to organize, it takes too much time. And some articles have even found that it's even more efficient, that virtual reality exposure therapy is more 
efficient on a treatment point of view uh, regarding different kind of uh, mental disorder like uh, anxiety disorder, phobia, addiction. So it's even more efficient than in reality. The future of virtual reality in mental health is a common question because virtual reality in itself is like science fiction. Well now that it established it's very efficient in many disorders, there is still some disorder which need to be explored. So there is two kind of aspect, there is the, the indication aspect, which is the new a disease that can be treated with virtual reality to be schizophrenia, for example, by using uh, virtual social context or virtual hallucination, and you can treat, but it's, it's experimental for, for the moment. You can treat uh, schizophrenia. So the idea is to, to widen uh, the indication of virtual reality exposure therapy. And on the other side, you have a technological aspect. Uh, because the future is also the idea that the, the technology, the, the, the headset, uh, will progress and will involve more and more senses and also more and more realistic graphics. This way, uh, the, the, the illusion that virtual reality is close to reality will be even uh, get stronger. Well, as a psychiatrist, as a psychiatrist, as a medical doctor and as a researcher, I will definitely advise my colleagues to use C2Care virtual environment. Why, in fact? Because if you compare it to, uh, to other virtual environments available, you will see that the C2Care has the most diverse type of environment to treat uh, many kinds of mental disorders. And you will also see that they are quite realistic with a lot of parameters to build a very progressive treatment. So I would definitely uh, recommend to use uh, the C2Care virtual environments.